Hey guys, welcome back to RPO Restorations. I've had a couple requests for this video in the comments section, so today we're gonna do it. We're gonna start untangling this maze of vacuum lines under the hood of your 80s or 90s General Motors vehicle. If you're having problems with your system or just wanted to learn more about it, then this is the video for you because today I'm gonna start breaking down exactly which systems are vacuum dependent, what they do, and we're gonna list some of their components. So let's jump right in and get started. All right, now before I start with our list, I just want to stress one thing. It's important to remember that every car line and every manufacturer's division kind of use their own setup for this system. Even year to year, some of these things change. So just because you have a 307 with a Quadrajet in an Oldsmobile, that doesn't mean your system's the same. So in order to break this down the right way, let's start with all the systems that are the same. And the first system is the power brake system. Most cars from this era have power brakes. The power brake system is connected to manifold vacuum at the rear of the carburetor by a hard line. It runs up this line through a filter and into your power brake booster. It's important to note if you're making changes to your system, this system requires a lot of vacuum. You can't run it off a hose or one of the other ports on the carburetor. It has to be run from a very, very wide pipe, or I should say nozzle, in your power brake system. If you're running from something else, you're not gonna get enough vacuum and you're gonna have problems with your brakes. All right, the next system that you'll find on any of these vehicles is the PCV valve. The PCV system is usually connected to a PCV valve on one of the valve covers. It runs up a hose, and into one of these lower parts on the carburetor. Guys, GM has been using this system since 1968 on passenger cars and light trucks. I don't care what you heard. Do not disconnect it. Do not disable it. If you do that, you're going to have nothing but problems with sludge and carbon buildup in your engine. Trust me. All right, you're also going to have a couple of vacuum brakes on your carburetor. These are located the front and back. You have a primary and a secondary. Now what these do is, when you start the car, the engine just fires over and the vacuum starts to build up. Build, it opens up your primary vacuum brake. That's the one on the front. That'll open your choke up a little bit, give the car a little bit more air so it doesn't run too rich. Then on a computer controlled system like this one, after a set period of time or when the engine has reached a certain temperature, it'll open up your secondary vacuum brake, which will open up your carburetor's choke a little bit more, give the, the engine a little bit more air, and it'll run a little better. And the last system that is universal on all these cars is there's going to be some type of sensor attached to it so that the engine computer knows how much vacuum your engine's getting. In our case, the sensor is attached to a small tube that's brought on by an orifice from a feed that feeds the thermostatically controlled air cleaner and parts of another system, which I'll get to in a second. And speaking of thermostatically controlled air cleaners, that brings us to our last universal system that's powered by vacuum. If you have one of these, you'll probably just have this side unless you have a dual snorkel. This is controlled by engine vacuum. What happens is, vacuum keeps it closed and it draws air, air from your hot air pipe down here, which is fed by air passing over the exhaust manifold until it hits a thermostat up here. Once that thermostat says the air temperature coming in is warm enough, this will open and give your engine fresh cold air. If you don't have one of these systems, could affect the way the car runs before it's fully warmed up in the cold weather. So if you have a daily driver, you might want to retain it. All right, now I'm going to take a little break from the video just to ask you guys to do me a few favors. If you found this video helpful, please do me a favor, tap that like button for me. It makes sure that YouTube shows this to more people that may be interested and it doesn't cost you a thing. And second of all, if you like what you see and you're into these cars, hit that subscribe button. Again, it's free, doesn't cost you a thing, and it'll really help me out, and you'll be able to get all the content that I put out pushed right to your phone, tablet, or television.
Thanks. Let's jump back into the video. Now, one of the major systems that almost all these cars have is called the Evaporative Emissions Control System. This is the system that centers around that charcoal canister underneath your hood. Now, what this system does is it captures vapors from raw gasoline that evaporate inside your gas tank or come out of your carburetor while the car is sitting parked, especially on a hot day. It captures these vapors and then at certain points in the engine cycle, engine vacuum will purge this charcoal canister of all the vapors, send them in to your carburetor and they'll get burned up in the normal combustion process. This system only consists of a few parts, one being the charcoal canister under your hood, which by the way, does have a filter underneath and you do need to change it every now and then, we'll say every 50,000 or so miles. So if you have one of these, you don't know if it's been changed, I'd go ahead and swap it out. You can find them through AC Delco online. Now let's break down the components of the system. One, all of these carburetors have a bowl vent, which is an outlet tube located in the top center of the carburetor that captures vapors that escape from the fuel bowl and send it down to your charcoal canister. There's also another line that runs from the charcoal canister to your fuel tank to capture those vapors. Now most of these systems are controlled by what's called a type 1 canister control valve. It's a round valve usually located at the front of the carburetor with four outlets or, or four ports. One port is fed by engine vacuum, another port is fed by the bowl vent, third port is fed by the charcoal canister, fourth port is usually connected to a thermal vacuum switch located somewhere on your intake manifold. I'll show a picture of one of those now as well. Now how this system works is thermal vacuum switches react to temperature and will open or close depending on what your engine's coolant temperature is. Uh, the switches are very simple. When the engine reaches a certain temperature, it will move vacuum suction to the charcoal canister, will then feed the fuel vapors in your carburetor. That's it. All right, the next major system on these cars is your exhaust gas recirculation system or your EGR valve. Here our EGR valve is located on top of the intake. What this system does is during certain operating conditions, it redirects a little bit of exhaust gases back in your intake. So it lowers the combustion temperature of your engine. On most GM computer controlled systems, the EGR valve, amongst other things like your secondary vacuum brake, are controlled by a solenoid system that's located somewhere in the engine compartment. In this case, ours is located right here behind the EGR valve next to the distributor. This allows the computer to activate or energize certain solenoids, which then send vacuum to certain systems, depending on what the operating conditions of the motor are. All right, the next vacuum control system that may be on your car or truck is the air management system. The air management system is a system with an air pump that push fresh air to either the carburetor, the exhaust manifolds, or the air cleaner, depending on the operating conditions, to ensure better combustion of the fuel. This system was gradually phased out in the late 80s into the 90s as GM moved away from carburetors. But you will, however, still find it on some of their throttle body injection systems before General Motors kind of realized that it wasn't necessary for those either. And the last system that you might find on your General Motors car or light truck from this era, it's called the Early Fuel Evaporative System. Most people don't even know this system exists, and it's usually the source of a really hard to find or mystery vacuum leak because a lot of mechanics don't even know it's there. What this system does is, during certain operating conditions, especially during warm up, it redirects a little bit of the exhaust gas around your intake manifold in order to warm it up and help that fuel atomize for a better combustion mixture and to stop it from collecting on the runners of the intake manifold. This system is usually found buried 
uh, somewhere in your exhaust, right over the motor. It's fed by a vacuum line from your solenoid up here. If you have a mystery leak, that may be the source. Check that hose because a lot of people don't even know it's there. And I guarantee that hose hasn't been replaced in a long time. All right, guys, so that's it. Part one of our primer on the vacuum system under the hood of your car or truck. Part two, we're going to start breaking down some of the routing. And I'm going to show you what I can to give you a better idea of where your hoses should go. So make sure you tune in and check that out. Hit that subscribe button so you don't miss it. I'll see you on the next one.